Let's say you wanted to calculate the number of months, days, and hours until the 4th of July in the Tokyo time zone. Kind of wild example, but it's obvious that it would be an absolute nightmare using the date object. You can see that even Deep Sea struggled with it for more than 10 minutes only to come up with the spooky looky algorithm. With Temporal, which is a new built-in JavaScript API for handling date and time, this will take 11 lines of beautiful code. Okay, 13 lines including the polyfill, but it's coming to all browsers and JavaScript runtimes fairly soon. And what proves Temporal's worth is more than 1,000 upvotes on the harshest tech forum ever, which doesn't happen every day for a JS thing. Unlike the date object, Temporal has native support for time zones, which are one of the hardest problems in computer science, on par with naming things, cache invalidation, and hydration errors in Next.js, for those of you familiar. It can calculate durations and account for all weird edge cases, like leap years, daylight savings time, different calendars, and it's immutable. Anyways, let's start from scratch. Temporal has different objects for representing different concepts regarding dates and time. We'll cover all the important ones, but to get the current timestamp, we'll use Temporal Now Instant, which will give us a Temporal Instant object pointing to the current moment. And I'm using a polyfill, as support for the Temporal API is still work in progress, but will on support in different browsers and runtimes later. Technically speaking, Temporal Instant represents the number of nanoseconds since the Unix epoch's start, aka the start of the world in terms of computer science. And the number of nanoseconds since the Unix epoch start is all that instants know about. They don't know anything about the time zone we're in, or even the calendar system. It's just a point in time. If we want to create an instance pointing to something else than now, we can do that by giving it an ISO stream, a date and time in the UTC time zone. In this example, the UTC date and time of the latest Super Bowl start. It's an instant, so it points to a specific point in time and has no clue about the time zone and the calendar system. So it can be interpreted as different times, different days, or even different months and years based on the time zone and the calendar system. We just use the UTC date to initialize it. Also, we can create an instant from the epoch seconds, milliseconds, etc., which is usually annoying with the date object as it only accepts milliseconds, whilst most other programming languages use seconds. So that leads to random times 1000 noise in your code base. One cool feature of the Temporal API is that it lets us calculate durations. For example, if we're interested in how long it's been since the start of the last Super Bowl, we can do Super Bowl instant, since, now instant. What we get back is a temporal duration, which is another object in the temporal API. If we log it, and I'm using the Quokka extension for the inline logs, we get the number of seconds, milliseconds, microseconds, and nanoseconds. Unless you're developing a quantum computer, you want something more reasonable than nanoseconds, and we can get that by specifying the smallest unit we're interested in, so let's say minutes instead of nanoseconds, and also the largest unit, let's say hours instead of seconds. That's still a bit weird though. Normally we'd want the number of days or months, but with instance, we can't do it. And the reason is, and I know I sound like a broken record now, but since instance don't have any calendar information, and months and days differ in length based on the calendar, it's not possible to calculate the duration in months or days. And of course, there are other objects in the temporal API, like plain date, that do have the calendar information and make this possible, and we'll get to them very soon. But first, there's one thing I wanted to show you that's painful with the date object, but not a problem at all with temporal. So you have this helper function to add a number of hours to a date. We then create a new date, which points to now, and call add hours legacy dates to create a date two hours from now. Do you know what will happen when we console of them? I've hinted to this in the intro. Since the date object is mutable, and in our add hours legacy date function, we call set hours on the argument, the add hours legacy date function will change the actual date argument. So now both now legacy date and two hours from now legacy date variables point to two hours from now. And using temporal, we'll never have this problem. If we have the analogical add hours function, 
but with a temporal instant as the argument. Calling dot add on it, we return a new instant of that instant, bit of a mouthful, and the now instant is still correctly pointing to now. And that's it for instance and durations. We remove all the code apart from the now instant and go back to the original question about how to calculate the duration until the 4th of July. How do we even express the 4th of July? Sure, we could use an instant like this, but can you see what the problem would be? given that instance mark a point in time? Well, the July the 4th instance is initialized from an ISO string that represents the start of the day, aka the midnight, in the UTC time zone. However, at this point in time, in for example the Eastern time, it's still July the 3rd, save for the Pacific time and other time zones. It's already past the midnight. A better way to represent this would be using temporal.plainDate, which in this case can be initialized in a similar way as the July the 4th instant, but unlike for instance, we initialize it with the date without the time, and the plain date doesn't point to a specific point in time. Quite the opposite, it holds information about a calendar day regardless of the time zone you're in. We can see how the same calendar date points to different points in time for different time zones. The blue rectangle represents the UTC time zone, and you can see that when July the 4th starts in the Eastern time zone, represented by the green rectangle, it's already 4 a.m. in the UTC time zone, and where July the 4th ends in the Eastern time zone, it's already July the 5th, 4 a.m. in UTC. And similarly for the Pacific time zone, represented by the red rectangle, where July the 4th starts and ends even later. Going a bit deep on plain dates, we can access the day property on it, which gives us the day of month, unlike the confusing getDay method on the date object, which gives back the day of week. And you can also get the month, which is the number of the actual month, for example, 7 for July, unlike the confusing get month on the date object, which gives back 6 as it starts with the 0th month. But apart from the information about the date itself, plain date also holds information about the calendar used, with a standard Gregorian calendar, the one that most of us use, being the default. This means that if we have another plain date, let's say the day of the last Christmas day, we can use the since method that we already know from instance to get the duration since the last Christmas. And this time, we can specify largest unit month to get the number of months, as the plain date knows how many days etc. there are in each calendar month of the standard Gregorian calendar. And if you wanted to use, for example, the traditional Chinese lunar calendar, you could pass in calendar Chinese. And plain date isn't the only object in the temporal plane family. There's also plane time, which represents so-called war clock times. For example, if you want an alarm clock to go off at 6 a.m., you want 6 a.m. irrespective of the time zone. And other objects like plane date time, a combination of plane date and plane time, and so on. Okay, so now we know how to express a point in time using instance, a date using plain date, by going back to our question about calculating the duration from now until the 4th of July, preferably in a specific time zone like Asia Tokyo, and preferably in months, days, and hours. How do we compare the two? Because the now instant variable is an instant, and July the 4th plain date is, well, a plain date. Fortunately, as you might have seen on the temporal objects diagram I've shown earlier, there is the zone daytime object, which comes to the rescue. The zone daytime object combines instance as it points to a specific point in time, but adds calendar and time zone information on top of it. With instance, one point in time can be represented by different times and dates based on the time zone or even the calendar system. But the zone daytime object points to a specific point in time in a specific time zone with a specific calendar. And yes, we can convert both instance and plain date to zone daytime. So with our now instant, we can create a new variable called now zone, which we'll get by calling now instant dot two zone daytime iso. ISO means that we want the standard ISO calendar, the Gregorian calendar, and we pass in Asia Tokyo as the time zone name. By the way, if you want the time zone you're currently in, you can use temporal now time zone ID to get it. You can also convert our July the 4th plane date using the two zone daytime method. This time we don't append the ISO as plane dates already have the calendar information and it'll get transferred onto the zone daytime variable. And the new July the 4th zone variable will point to the midnight of July the 4th by default, which is what happens when converting plane dates into zone daytimes. And it's exactly what we want. And finally, 
the moment we've been waiting for. We can now calculate the duration until July the 4th by taking now zone, calling until July the 4th zone on it, and specifying month as the largest unit and hour as the smallest unit. And we get back the number of months, days, and hours until the 4th of July in Asia Tokyo time zone. Now, the most important question is when is the temporal API coming to browsers and JavaScript runtimes? For now, we need to use the temporal polyfill, but since the temporal API is a stage 3 ECMAScript proposal, it's very unlikely that the API is going to change. Whilst it's not possible to tell when exactly temporal will be available out of the box in most browsers and runtimes, it's already possible to play with it if you enable some feature flags. Technology Preview You can use XPCJSC use temporal one flag to enable it. In Firefox Nightly, it's available by toggling the JavaScript options experimental temporal option in the config, and for Chrome, you can enable it by passing JS flags harmony temporal. And for server JavaScript runtimes, in Node, you can use the harmony temporal. Both Chrome and Node use V8 under the hood, and V8 uses harmony prefix for its experimental features, so that's why it's the same for Chrome and Node. Dino is very smart, and when you try to use temporal in it, it tells you that you need to enable it by using unstable temporal flag and finally for bun you can pass bun jsc use temporal one to enable it similar to safari as both bun and safari use the javascript core engine as always let me know if you have any questions in the comments and i'd love to see you in the next one take care